Hi, it's for Marie, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to take you from start to finish on sewing a linen Christmas stocking with a sawtooth quilt block pattern. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, but rather just a sit back, enjoy the creative aspect, listen to some poetry and some interesting folkloric tales and a personal story. And if you're interested in making this linen stocking, I will provide the link. The template and the detailed instructions are provided through a blog on the fabrics-store.com website. This is the first time I made the sawtooth block pattern. It's not perfect, but I'm actually making two stockings and my rotary cutter was horrifically unsharp. I should probably put that on my Christmas wish list. A new blade would be appreciated. So here we go, and a ho ho ho. The history of the Christmas stocking. The tradition of hanging Christmas stockings above the fireplace has been around for years and is one of the most popularly observed Christmas customs. But what was the origin for this long held tradition? There's no single account that defines it, but there are a few legends that illustrate the custom of hanging Christmas stockings, whether that be off of your fireplace, a doorknob, windowsill, or a bedpost. One of the legends regarding Christmas stockings takes us to a small village where the destiny of the once wealthy merchant and his daughters changed overnight when they fell into poverty. The father was worried about the future of his children and afraid that he wouldn't be able to provide dowries for their marriages in the future. At that time, this meant an almost humiliation due to the impossibility of wedlock. While the now famous St. Nicholas traveled, he passed through the village and heard the sad story about the merchant and his daughter, learning from the locals that he would not accept any gifts of charity. One night, while he was riding his gorgeous white horse, he stopped at the merchant's home and threw three bags filled with gold coins down the house's chimney. The bags fell down right into the girls' stockings, which were hung by the fireplace mantle to dry. The next morning, the daughters and their father discovered the coins and jumped for joy. The young women married happily and prosperously, so Obviously, their story had a happily ever after. The details of their story spread among the villagers, whose children began hanging their stockings by the fireplace, hoping to receive presents from St. Nicholas. Another legend that explains the tradition of Christmas stockings derives from the Dutch folklore. In the Netherlands, Santa Claus, called Sinterklaas in Dutch, and his fellow assistant, Black Pete, annually dock in the harbor of a different city. When they disembark, Sinterklaas and his pal travel around upon a white steed and a mule. The children impatiently wait for their arrival and prepare special treats of hay and carrots, which they place in their wooden clogs. On the day of the arrival, the horse, the mule, and Sinterklaas would enjoy the children's treats and then reward their devotion and care with small presents such as candies, ornaments, nuts and shells, miniature toys, etc. When the Dutch settlers immigrated to America, they introduced Americans to many of their traditions. After a while, 
Sinterklaas became known as Santa Claus, and allegedly the wooden clogs were replaced by stockings. So what will you find in your Christmas stocking this year? Folkloric tales also talk about symbolism, and an orange found in a stocking represents the gold left by Saint Nick. If you find an apple in your stocking, it means that you've been good throughout the year. On the other hand, if you find a piece of coal in your stocking, well, you've been naughty. When my own father was a little boy, he recalled a memory of the smell of orange. He and his brothers and sisters would always have blood oranges in their stockings back in the old country of Switzerland, and it was a huge treat for them. Fast forward in America, in the summertime, my brothers and sisters would eat oranges by the tons. And my father would always say the smell of an orange always took him back to the old country and those memories of Christmas past and those special family traditions. In the literary world, in December 1823, the ever popular poem, Visit from St. Nick, also known as Twas the Night Before Christmas, was published in the Sentinel in New York. Originally, it was um, by an anonymous poet. Later, Clement Clark Moore claimed to be the writer, although um, it's also been disputed and some people credit that poem to writer Henry Livingston, which is interesting. Anyway, popular poem, "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there." A less popular poem, but one that I think is beautiful, is called Old Santa Claus, also published by Clement Clark Moore this was published in 1821. Here it reads, Old Santa Claus. Old Santa Claus, with much delight, his reindeer drives this frosty night, o'er chimney tops and tracks of snow to bring his yearly gifts to you. The steady friend of virtuous youth, the friend of duty and of truth. Each Christmas Eve, he joys to come where love and peace have made their home. Through many houses he has been, and various beds and stockings sing, some white as snow and neatly mended, others that seemed for pigs intended. Where I found good girls or boys that hated quarrels, strife, and noise, I left an apple or a tart, or wooden gun or painted cart. To some I gave a pretty doll, to some a peg top, or a ball. No crackers, cannons, squibs, or rockets to blow their eyes up or their pockets. No drums to stun their mother's ear, no swords to make their sisters fear, but pretty books to store their mind with knowledge of each various kind. But where I found the children naughty, in manners rude and in temper haughty, Thankless to parents, liars, swears, boxers or cheats, or base tale bearers. I left a long black birchen rod, such as the dread command of God, directs a parent's hand to use where virtues path his sons refuse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And on this Christmas Eve, I'll leave you with a final poem. This is written by Ella Higginson and was published in 1898, Christmas Eve. Straight 
through a fold of purple mist, the sun goes down a crimson wheel, and like an opal burns the sea that once was cold as steel. With pomp of purple, gold, and red, thou wilt come back at morrow's dawn, but thou can never bring, O sun, the Christmas that is gone. Well, I'm going to hang these freshly sewn linen stockings by my chimney with care and hopes that St. Nick will soon be here. Have a wonderful holiday with family and friends. Be safe. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time in the sewing room. Bye.